Hey everybody, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer here, back with another episode of Top 3 Tuesday. Today's topic is not going to be game oriented. So today's Top 3 Tuesday topic is my Top 3 Star Trek films. I'm going for the entire Star Trek film franchise, starting with Star Trek The Motion Picture and going all the way until Star Trek Beyond. So here we go. My third favorite Star Trek film is... I just said it. Star Trek Beyond. After Star Trek Into Darkness, which was the previous film in this series, a lot of the fans were kind of upset because they decided to tread over the territory that Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan had already established. So there wasn't a whole lot of interest in this film when it was released, which is shown in its relatively low box office compared to the previous two films in the reboot series. But on the flip side, the reception that Into Darkness got convinced Paramount to go about making the next film in a different way. And that was to focus more on original stories and not just trying to remake the old films and that is why i love star trek beyond it feels like this reboot franchise is finally starting to take on a life of its own instead of just trying to suckle off what has already come before it the cast is finally gelling here completely the action is fantastic special effects are awesome Great cinematography. Bringing in Justin Lin, who had just directed four of the Fast and Furious films in a row, brought in a fresh set of eyes that really, really elevated this movie and gave it a really cool visual look. I finally started to appreciate Michael Giacchino's musical score. And the best part of all is that it feels like the original series. The way the character dynamics work, you finally get Spock and McCoy kind of going at each other. This one doesn't rely on a whole lot of stupid humor. And it introduced a really cool character in Jayla, who is played by Sophia Butella, who was named that because in the script they just kept on calling her Jennifer Lawrence from Winter's Bone. So they just condensed the name to Jayla. <laughs> funny story. And it just works outside of the fact that I don't like how the villain was handled a whole lot. He was kind of kept mysterious until the last 20 minutes of the movie. And all this exposition just kind of gets thrown at you awkwardly when they could have just done it organically as the movie went along. But that doesn't mean he's not a bad villain. I think that when you finally do get all the information you need, he's a very tragic character who kind of has this weird version of PTSD. And that whole military person being thrown into civilian life and not being able to adapt. I thought that was very, very interesting. And Idris Elba, who plays the villain, is really, really good at it. Outside of that stupid, I can change my shape whenever I absorb an alien and turn into what they look like. I, that, that was just stupid. And just to confuse the audience, just to cover up the fact that his character is really human under all that makeup. But the script by Simon Pegg and Doug Young is actually very, very fun and fast and entertaining. Exactly the Star Trek reboot movie we needed in order to show that the casting and everything was perfect from the get-go. They just needed a really, really strong script to get it going. My second favorite Star Trek film is going to be a little bit controversial. It is from the Next Generation films. This one is usually considered to be one of the worst ones in that series of four films. I don't. I love this one. Star Trek Nemesis. I love movies where a main character or, you know, one of the main characters is shown the what-if version of themselves. That's always been like a storytelling tactic that I've really enjoyed. If this one thing had happened just slightly differently, would you have become a complete a-hole down the line or would you have actually become a better person? And you get to see that with not only Picard, but you also get to see this with Data. And you get to see two different ways that that aspect is dealt with which I thought was extremely interesting and is exactly what The Next Generation was all about, was really interesting ideas. Lots of really cool action scenes. This one was actually one of the more action-oriented ones in the series and bringing in director Stuart Baird who had done U.S. Marshals and Executive Decision and a couple of other movies who was actually an editor by trade was a fresh set of eyes after I felt that Jonathan Frakes, who directed the previous film, Insurrection, kind of dropped the ball doing the bare minimum of what was needed to make the movie work. And I think the movie he just has a really, really stupid sense of humor. But he made the movie visually interesting. He knew exactly what he needed to shoot in order to tell the story. Even though a lot of it was left on the cutting room floor and would have made the movie even better in my eyes. We get to see some cool things with some of the tertiary characters. You finally get to see Troy do something. Riker gets to do something. And Worf Jordy and Dr. Crusher pop in and out as the movie requires. But it has a great supporting cast. All the new actors that they brought in like Ron Perlman and Dina Meyer and of course Tom Hardy. I thought they were really fun to watch. There is some makeup that is pretty bad, like the, the Romulan makeup looks like crap, but the Riemann makeup is awesome. They look kind of like Nosferatu vampires. And the ending when Picard has to kill basically himself, the look on his face when he does it is, I think, just priceless and really sells this whole mirror image thing perfectly. I, I just thought it was fantastic. Even though, like, the Data having to, you know, kill himself 
to save everybody kind of came out of left field because they had deleted a scene earlier where they kind of set up the fact that Data was wondering like what death would be like. If we ever got like an extended cut of this, I would be thrilled beyond belief. We're never going to get that, I'm sure. But as it is, I just love Star Trek Nemesis. I watch this a lot. I like it so much. I actually just for shits and giggles wrote a sequel to this. So, that's saying something. And my favorite Star Trek film is obviously going to be the predictable one, and that is Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. I have not only the standard version of the movie, but also the director's cut, which I think is actually superior. All of the main actors from the original show are given something to do, especially Chekhov. He gets the most screen time out of everybody from the secondary cast. Nimoy is owning it. Shatner's owning it. Ricardo Montalban. Oh my god. I have never seen anybody chew the scenery as awesomely as him. <laughs> he just goes for broke and lets loose and just owns everyone in this movie. He makes Shatner look like an amateur. Director Nicholas Meyer, who previous to this directed a movie called Time After Time, which was a time travel story about H.G. Wells coming to 1980s, I think, San Francisco to track Jack the Ripper, which is an odd concept, but it's actually a very good movie, was the perfect man to helm this after the motion picture kind of bored everyone to death. This one, it feels more swashbuckly, like Captain Horatio Hornblower-style, High Seas Adventure-type movie. It also has this cool Moby Dick thing going on, which is awesome, with Khan hunting Kirk, screaming like Shakespeare and Melville quotes. It's awesome. Lots of great action, but not in the Star Wars vein, where it's just like massive fleet battles. No, this one is more like watching two submarines tracking each other. It is awesome, especially when they go into the nebula, and they have no way of tracking each other, and they're just blindly shooting. It is just fantastic. And man, is this movie gory. I saw this in the drive-in when I was a kid when it was first released, and there was parts of this movie that scarred me, like seeing that eel coming out of Chekhov's ear and Khan's frizzle-fried face after the bridge gets hit with a phaser blast. And this director's cut adds in little moments that fill out the movie even more, like now you know who that guy that Scotty brought up to the bridge was after Khan's first attack. It's his nephew. The characters are written so, so well, especially compared to what they were like in the motion picture where everyone was written as if they were asleep by people that did not understand what Star Trek was about and how these characters are supposed to interact. The new Starfleet uniforms are fantastic and very military-esque, which is exactly what I felt these movies needed, not pajamas that were worn in the motion picture. James Horner's score for this movie is fantastic. I actually own it on vinyl, that's how much I love it. And it has a great tearjerker ending that you know how it ends. This movie just rocked my world when I was a kid. I loved Star Trek before and since my parents kind of raised me on the old TV show, when the original movie was released my parents took me to see that. I didn't get what was going on and I fell asleep because I was a kid. Seeing this, my eyes were glued to that drive-in screen and I could not look away. This is the perfect Star Trek film that encapsulates exactly what the show was and what needed to be done to make it a film. It is super entertaining, ultimately rewatchable. I watch this movie at least once or twice a year. It is also one of my favorite films of all time. So. so what are your three favorite Star Trek films? Let me know, do a response video, leave a response link in the comment section below because I want to hear what you have to say. So until next time, I'm Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer signing off.